Hello, I'm Jean Godd. I'm with the Center for Autism and Early Childhood Mental Health at Montclair State University. This is our series on regulating, relating, caring, and learning. And today I'll be talking about what to expect when children return to school. These sessions are about 20 minutes in length and they are based on the center's philosophy for the belief that emotional and relational well-being is foundational in development and educational progress. So what can we expect? Well, the only thing that is absolutely certain is that there will be an uncertainty of how children will be, their families, and how we as professionals will be. We can rely on the predictability that when um, children return to the center, they'll be bringing with them the experiences that they have encountered while sheltered in place. This really emphasizes that we need to understand what those experiences were, what worked, what activities supported them, and we will find these things out by asking uh, open-ended curious questions. And then we will begin providing activities, interactions that allow for the safe expression for processing of these experiences and sharing in the emotions. If we do not create this path for emotions to be felt and expressed, then they will be um, escalated and um, come about in vulnerable places. They will emerge. And um, we may not be prepared for the times when these um, emotions are, are shown through behaviors. So it's important that we are present, we are there for each child and their family. We're experts at providing connections and building re nurturing relationships. However, we will not have all the tools in the toolbox that we've had in the past. Um, we will be limited as to the uh, ability to touch safely or to be able to express um, the, the full range of our emotions by our expressions. So in the past, we relied on things like hugs and high fives and snuggles and sitting on our laps and holding hands. And now we'll approach our connections with children in understanding that science lets us know that when one sensory process is not available, we become advanced or sophisticated in using some of our other senses. So we will be well aware of the tone of our voice, the use of soft eyes, slow, deliberate, intentional movements instead of quick, um, sharp movements. And we'll be using words and phrases to reassure the children as to what is happening and what is expected. And even though we might have had relationships with the children that are returning and their families, we need to take these assumptions of what it's going to be like um, for the future interactions and let them go or place them aside. This experience has no previous history. I like to think about it as imaginally, imagining going to a, a, a place where I've never been before that has so many factors, um, much like a Disney World or maybe a carnival or a backyard party. There's no reference point until we enter. And therefore, it's going to be very important that um, a slow entrance, a supported and intentional description, maybe even practice of arrival times and what that looks like and asking children and families how it's working for them. Many prevention 
professionals have mentioned that it's going to be like September each year when things are new and a new program starts and some of the same students return, but there are new students. Unfortunately, that would be the easiest scenario. However, this story has never before been written or felt. It will not be exactly like September because we have many studies, we have information that um, teaches us how to introduce curriculum, how to pace the learning for children. And with coronavirus, we are learning the situation as it's placed in front of us. So we rely on the strength of parallel process. What that means is we know that how we are is important to building those nurturing relationships. So we are going to be in tune with how our emotions are being communicated. We'll know that our anxiety will be there. So we will gather as much information as possible, not only about the guidelines, and what is needed to keep the environment safe and healthy for our children and families. But we're also going to reframe our own thoughts in going that extra step in providing confidence, trust, and security and joining with the families, asking them how they would um, work with us in supporting the message that we are doing the best that we can to keep the environment only not physically safe, but emotionally safe as well. That's very draining. Um, so in this parallel process, the how we are is going to be observed, experienced by the other adults, our team, the staff members, the administration, and most importantly, the parents. And so as we move forward, with the same being and messaging, the children are gaining our calm and the confidence that we have. So as we feel depleted, we also will be looking to each other because we cannot do this work alone. A strong support system is needed. Um, one that will hold our fears and concerns and be genuine in accepting where we might be in the range of emotions. We do know that nervousness, anxiety is a contagious emotion. It spreads like wildfire. So finding the calm will slow or eliminate that. And guess what? Calm is also an emotion that's contagious. So spreading our calm is our goal. Some families may not return and that becomes emotional for many of us. Many families become so preoccupied as understood about the health and safety for their children and the environment. So many are adjusting to being at home for a very long period of time. And we know that one of the ways that we learn a new skill or adapt to environment is understanding there's a beginning, a learning period, an introduction, a middle, practicing of that skill, and then an end, a celebration of what's been accomplished. We did not have the opportunity to celebrate or end the experience of last year's program, even of staying at home. And I encourage you to be as creative as possible um, and have a closing activity. Some centers um, completed their moving up or graduation um, ceremonies virtually. Some centers invited families one at a time to come 
and um, wrap up last year's school year. These all help us in moving forward. And if we don't take time to wrap things up, it seems unbalanced unbalanced or unfinished. The children are watching us. Children learn using mirror neurons about emotional expression. They watch how an adult processes a disappointment. Is it through being sad and showing that through a facial emotion? Or is it tossing something in the corner? We often use the example that um, when a child looks at a toy, for example, a jack-in-the-box, they look at it with wonder and curiosity and the music begins and they relate that this music means something's going to happen and when Jack pops out of his box and if the adult, if the caregiver Express, expresses an emotion of fear, then over time, the mirror neurons in the brain processing for the child will integrate jack-in-the-box music, sight of the jack-in-the-box, popping up of the jack-in-the-box as something fearful. So we are going to be very attentive as children engage in these new activities, um, guidance in entering um, an environment where they may have played before, but there are new rules, they will be watching how we express the emotions that will be supportive in offering calm and understanding. And this is the way that we help children move toward emotional competency, as well as create an environment of co-regulation. And that is an ultimate goal. So that how I am able to regulate my feelings through neuroreciprocity, children will gain the felt safety in expression of those emotions. So a critical point in this entire process is the awareness that what happened while the child was learning at home and being cared for at home is packed away in that backpack that they bring to school. What was that time of isolation like? We want to ask these curious questions. Were there any losses? Did the child experience the loss of a loved one? And the family as well. Are they going through a time of mourning? What activities did you engage in that your, chi your child really, really liked? And maybe there was some repetition there that comfort was found. And during that initial time back, how do we help with the separation? It might be hard, but it may not be difficult. That is an assumption that we put aside and we observe each, with each and every family and assist. How can we make this special and comforting that your child knows that you will return when the day's activity is completed at the center and there will be a special goodbye, a proper goodbye and reunion process that they can look forward to. And are there any comfort objects, books, songs, activities that your child became strongly attached to? I have found that in times of uncertainty for children or experiences of traumatic events, such as loss or separation, that the safe haven creed, which sounds like this, you are safe, I will protect you, you can play. That not only provides in the words themselves, comfort and understanding that I am safe, 
but for a child, it also provides in tone a very calming agent that can assist in that co-regulation or dissemination of the dysregulation. Children will want to explore. There may be emotions that seem mismatched. There may be triggers that, that uh, ignite anger or withdrawal or distress or excitement. Um, the child may be comforted by understanding exactly how they can play, or they may want to discover all the materials that are available. And it, it may seem that in their learning, they've had a bit of regression and they need to get up to speed in their play. It would be great if we could uh, facilitate how the peers understand what each other have been through, maybe some of the fun activities and uh, looking at possibly a show and tell opportunity of the times that they have been home with their family or what they might be looking forward to in, in doing and experiencing now that they're back at the center. We definitely will be um, looking for um, or tapping into our patients and be tolerant of all of our um, emotions and putting our agenda, our agenda aside and taking the child's lead. So thank you for joining me today. Our center has a number of programs that are available to you. We'd like to hear from you if you're in need of um, us joining with you in promoting the social emotional health for children. Thank you.